Commissioner, as EU Competition Commissioner, you were called the EU's Iron Lady. What do you want to achieve now as Commissioner responsible for the digital agenda? Well, just to start with your uh, expression of my last term in office, that was not my goal, but it happens to be. Um, I'm Dutch and I'm straightforward and you get what you uh, see, so to say. And that's the same in the digital agenda. Uh, and I'm highly involved in the digital agenda. It is the first flagship of the Commission and it is really making sense. It is a fascinating portfolio. It is a horizontal portfolio, by the way. So I have to deal with all the colleagues nearby, so with the colleague of environment, of education, of health, of <coughs> e-government, and name it, and energy. So it is quite interesting to get them involved and deliver what we have promised in the digital agenda. And one line that will absolutely be remembered by everybody is um, the Commission, slash I myself, I said, every European digital in 2013. And I can assure you that it's a line that is not to be misunderstood. So there is also a risk. So I need parties in the game and therefore I'm delighted to be with you. Yes, you are addressing the Committee of the Regions this week. What do you expect exactly from regions and cities? Well, they are important parties in the game, what I was already mentioning, for uh, it is one challenge, of course, to write the digital agenda, but at the end of the day, the implementation needs investors, needs users, needs governments, needs local authorities, and needs absolutely the citizen being aware how important it is. It's not uh, anymore a matter of are you in favour for a digital society? It's there. And being aware of it's there, then make the best out of it mm -hmm. for the competition and for, of course, our lifestyle, but also being able to deliver services and products that we were never ever thinking of. Mm -hmm. The Committee of the Regions asks to be involved in the European digital governance cycle, for instance in the Commission's experts groups, uh, in the annual digital assembly. Will you support that? Absolutely. Um, I would be delighted. It is an open door and we need to communicate that there is no misunderstanding what is at stake but also how important it is to go to the citizens at the end of the day and also mm -hmm. just communicating with every European, so to say, is absolutely a must to have a close cooperation with the regions mm -hmm. and with the cities. Now, with all the economic, social, environmental problems Europe is facing right now, is the digital agenda not a luxury project? On the contrary. It could be the solution for the challenge that we are facing. Yes, indeed, we do have a financial uh, crisis and we sincerely hope that it is a bit <coughs> at our back at the moment. But still, we do have to face that a lot has to be done for our competitiveness of Europe. We are just explaining, and the president did that already uh, at the beginning of uh, this term in office, that economic growth and creating jobs is main, but that also means that we need to hire up at the level of our activities in Europe. And that is also absolutely a point that we have to invest for digital is uh, talking about internet, is talking about a lot of other challenging products and services, but you need broadband investments for that. Mm -hmm. Putting the digital agenda um, into practice will cost loads, lots of money. Um, to roll out high-speed internet access across Europe, to develop cross-border online services, to train people and so on. As public budgets are very tight, where should this money come from? Well, number one, it is an investment for the future. So spending money now makes sense for getting the profits out of it tomorrow, so to say. Another line, and that makes sense, it is indeed, it's no coffee money that we are talking of. It is big money, but we don't need to spend it tomorrow, one day, and then 
it is fixed. Mm -hmm. It can be spread all over a period. And what we did in the digital agenda, indeed 2013, it is every European digital. And then going on and talking about the speed of what we have in mind. And of course, the higher the speed is, the better the competition and the competitiveness is saved. But also, not everyone sincerely needs that high speed, 100 megabits per second is really top. And it is in certain member states, it is already there and it is already functioning. So we need to take into account that we spread it over a certain period, that we do have to deliver, for otherwise we can't fill in every European digital, and that a lot of profitable parts are connected with it. If you allow me just to give an example, for example, e-health and an aging population, we are all aware of that. And it's all over the place, it's over all the 27 member states, those issues that are getting a lot of attention and rightly so a lot of uh, financial uh, consequences are connected with it if we are using the digital possibilities so for example in the e-house proposals in the digital agenda it can be done that people can live longer on themselves mm -hmm. so isn't that great mm -hmm. being independent in your living as long as it could be knowing that you are getting older if you are careful in traffic, so to say. But also that uh, the health and the uh, care uh, cost could be lowered when we are doing it via a digital way of communicating in certain cases, of course. And taking into account that via, for example, those possibilities in connecting research institutes, hospitals, uh, doctors and so on and so forth to give them the latest information what is at stake. So all in all it is indeed cost, yeah, mm -hmm. but it's also benefit mm -hmm. and therefore you need to invest now and you need to communicate with all the citizens that it is of great importance. Mm -hmm. Isn't it great to have a connection with your grandchildren? Isn't it great to have possibilities to live on your own longer mm -hmm. than you otherwise mm -hmm. would... Uh, you were mentioning the structural funds. They are undergoing a reform, a revision. What is your position in this game? Well, that is interesting for life is all about uh, making priorities. And it is in your personal life, but it is also in the political life of a government or of a municipality or whatever politician. And having said that, we should take into account that talking about this type of investments, indeed, it is not a matter of showing today the investment, tomorrow the flowers out of the investment. It will take a bit longer. But there, I'm just addressing all those politicians. You are not only responsible for today, you are responsible for the consequences of your decisions of a much longer period. Mm -hmm. And therefore, we need to invest. And that is with the Structural Fund. In the last um, Barroso uh, Commission, we took the decision and backed by uh, the Council that there was a opportunity, big money available for investing in broadband. And I was very sad in finding out that not that many uh, governments and uh, politicians has taken that decision that it should be spent mm -hmm. for investment mm -hmm. in broadband. So if I understand you correctly, you are arguing in favour of strong structural funds, strong regional policy, also for the implementation of the digital agenda. Yes, absolutely yes, but it is a two-way traffic. Strong the fund, yeah, but also a courageable politician taking decisions how to spend that fund. Mm -hmm. There is another question many people are worried about. The debate about the data retention directive and the street view applications show that citizens are very afraid of online services keeping, keeping information of them on them. What's your plan to reconcile the economic objectives and the growth of the online sector with the fundamental right to privacy and data protection? 
Well, it is a sensitive area, no doubt about that. Uh, the review of the directive of um, <coughs> the data protection will be um, soon at the table. Um, you can be absolutely certain that it will be a balanced proposal of my colleague. <coughs> Having said that, uh, we have to take into account that saying no to whatever is at stake in this area won't give us an opportunity. And we should find a balance in which we do have the feeling that trust is at stake and that we have to deliver trust, that we have to give a good feeling about security and that we have to take our measures for cybercrime attacks and what have you. Close cooperation with uh, Cecilia Malström, mm -hmm. um, my colleague uh, commissioner, and um, a close cooperation with Vivian Reding, another colleague that is at stake. And we are aware that if there is no trust, if there is no security, then uh, it won't fly. And we need to uh, do what we have to do. Commissioner, do you have an iPad and yeah. a digital diary? I have an iPad and I got it um, as a birthday present from uh, my son. And I'm delighted. It is absolutely great.